Okay. So we've considered all of these elements um, in a somewhat isolated way. We've talked about pitch, rhythm, texture, timbre. But form basically is how these elements move through a piece and develop over time. It's the large scale design. Think of it like the architectural design of the music, the song or the tune itself. It's basically how does the music organize itself over time? How does it unfold? And one thing that's important to note about form is that a lot of the way we recognize form is through um, the repetition of the same musical material. Uh, think of Beethoven's fifth. Ba, 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 ba. Ooh, that was wrong. <laughs> think about Beethoven's fifth, right? Um, but what happens there is that same basic musical idea keeps re getting repeated over time. It builds up expectations. Now, other things that happen is that there's contrast. Um, eventually, that basic musical idea is, is flipped around, it's twisted, it's changed in so many different ways to provide contrast, difference. It's slowed down, it's, made, it's put higher in pitch, lower in pitch. Um, it, we change the different scales associated with it. And so that also plays into the idea of variation. So all of these things happen in a piece of music that help us understand a sense of form. Think about a pop song, right? Um, you have maybe a little introduction, but then we have this thing we call a verse, where the basic story telling aspect of the song happens. And then what happens next? We have the chorus. Right, that big explosive punchy part that keeps coming back round and round, right? That's our repetition. And so eventually that creates a sense of beginning, middle, and end as we work through a song. That's the form. All right. So very much like in poetry, for any of you uh, folks that are poetry savvy, um, we use letters to designate form. When we recognize that a section is the same section of music that ex happened before in the song, we'll use the same letter to represent that. So we'll say there's an A section, a B section, which is different, right? We're saying this contrasts with the A section we heard before. And we use as many letters as we need um, to designate different parts of the music. So here's an example of form, right? Think about Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We have an A, B, A form. So we're basically saying the first and the second, oh, sorry, the first and the third sections are the same. Um, and the second section is a contrasting one. It's different. So I'll, I'll sing this for you, even though, again, not a singer. But twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Right? So that's the first part. And then here, listen to the contrast. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Contrast. And then listen to how it feels when we return back to the first section in this third line. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Right? We feel a sense of, of closure. We feel a sense of a journey that just occurred because we started off with this introduction. We had a little contrast and departure from this basic um, introduction and phrase. And then we return back home, right? It's like we completed the journey. So this is why we recognize musical form and this is why form matters so much. All right, so another thing to consider with music on top of these elements is also dynamics. This relates to the physical property of sound of amplitude. So the loudness or the softness of these tones. And we actually use a lot of Italian terms to describe dynamics. So fortissimo, pianissimo. Um, as you can see, if, as we go up, we get louder and louder and louder. Um, as we go down, we get softer and softer and softer. Um, dynamics add a lot of expressive content and expressive feeling to music. So that's why they end up be, it ends up being really important to change the dynamics, whether very gradually over time or suddenly to create great impact and contrast, right? So that's what you can see here. This is an example of dynamics changing over time. We'll go from piano, which you can see here is very soft, 
will gradually crescendo, meaning to gradually increase to a forte, aka being loud. And then we can even decrescendo, right? Get quieter to piano again. And so an example I always love to give uh, with this moment and how dynamics can help build excitement is uh, the song Shout by the Isley Brothers. Take a listen to that if you, if you aren't familiar with it. But there's a section somewhere in the middle where the singer keeps repeating the same lines over again. A little bit softer now, a little bit softer now. And he gets quieter in the song and it builds up this anticipation because all of a sudden he starts saying, a little bit louder now, a little bit louder now. And anytime I've seen that played at a wedding, people get hyped. It's great. Um, so dynamics really add a whole nother dynamic element to a piece of music. Okie dokes. So that brings us to a conclusion with those really basic elements of music. And the next thing I want to consider are musical instruments. These are the devices, right? The instruments that generate sound, that generate musical tones. And so what's important for the purpose of this class is to know about the Hornbostel Sox classification system. Um, Hornbostel Sox, Hornbostel Sox um, are a pair of ethnomusicologists who went around the world and tried to categorize the various instruments around the world. Now, they were attempting to get rid of some of those ethnocentric ideals about you know, what a musical instrument is and what value does it have. And they decided to focus on describing the instrument itself based on how it produces sound. So not based on what culture it came from or what value it has in society, but just how it produces sound. And we still use this system today. So I'll go over some of the main um, instruments, categorizations, and just be sure to practice these because we'll keep using them through the semester, right? So we have aerophones. These instruments generally require air to produce a vibration. So think about a flute, think about a trumpet. You need to blow air into it for it to make a sound, all right? We have membramophones. So think about a drum. They have a membrane over the actual shell of the drum that you have to hit. Because that membrane vibrates up and down, um, it creates the types of vibrations we need for musical sound. So that's how that one produces sound. All right? We also have chordophones. So these instruments require the vibration of a string. So think of a guitar. Um, we can even think of a piano because... Inside a piano are hammers that hit a string. That's what happens when you press the key down. So chordophones need a string to vibrate to produce sound. We also have idiophones, which can be a little tricky to understand. But an idiophone is essentially an instrument, right, that vibrates itself. When you hit the body of the instrument, that creates the vibration needed. So a great example of this is a tambourine. When you hit the tambourine, the tambourine shakes and rattles and vibrates. That's an example of an idiophone. You don't need to blow air or hit a or pluck a string for that to happen. Just um, hit the instrument itself and it produces sound. All right. And then the last one I'll mention, and just so you know, there, there's more than this. But the last one I'll mention for this video are electrophones. So these are instruments like synthesizers that produce sound through electrical vibrations, right? Um, electricity essentially generates the similar vibrations that you get from whew, a puff of air. Okie dokes. So that is it for our multicultural music foundations. Um, we've talked about things like pitch and frequency, of course, rhythm, timbre, form, texture, instruments. The only thing we didn't talk about yet is the idea of genre and style. But 
the one thing to realize is that all of these other elements that we've discussed play an important role in helping us understand what a particular music genre is or a particular music style. All right. So genres are basically different types of musical compositions, um, right? We can have a uh, hip hop genre, um, R&B, rock. These are different formulas almost for musical sounds and musical styles, right? Generally, what we'll find is that there are similarities in instrumentation. So if we think of a rock song, we, we generally think of like guitars and certain vocals and electric basses. But if we think about disco, right, we think about drum machines, string sounds, disco divas, right? So instrumentation, um, form of songs, think about a, a piece from Bach, you know, um, a Western art music piece versus a pop tune from Ariana Grande. Different forms and ways the music unfolds over time, um, Bach pieces can end up being, I mean, let's just say Beethoven, actually. Beethoven symphony can be hu huge, right? Um, almost an hour long, an Ariana Grande song is like three minutes, right? So different forms, and then things like texture, style. When we break down all these elements and we analyze them, we, we notice that certain musical genres and styles have similarities in these qualities, all right? So that's it for our music fundamentals. Um, please ask questions. If you have them, uh, you can always ask them during the lecture class. And let's just get comfortable using these terms. Make sure you practice. Um, I'll make sure to use them with you so we're all on the same page. All right. I will see you guys later and have fun. <laughs>